All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call, Cindy Fox Griffin. Here. Debbie Haley. Here. Uh, Johannes was here. Scott McMyer. Here. Dan Coons. Here. Rick Masterson. Here. Brian Hutman. Here. Dick Ruffcard. Here. Robert Schmidt. Here. Mike Steiniger. He's on the phone. He's on the phone. Yeah. He, him and Dick are on the computer. Perfect. And Dan Tanyani. Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, you've got two sets of minutes, one from October and one from November uh, that were emailed out. Yeah, so motion to approve. Second. Any adjustments or corrections? All of the favor signal say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. At this time, we would open public comment. Uh, I will read a quick statement from Arnie Dinhouse, who says he was unable to attend the meeting because we changed the meeting schedule. Uh, he is highly opposed to the doubling of the city of St. Charles Zumbelt color replacement. This is ridiculous and a waste of taxpayer money. The city would wait, should wait until the economic changes. The city's testimony of the application process was the replacement was moderate and could wait to be replaced. Members, please be cautious in your additional spending. As the county road fund will be unbalanced and broke with delaying other projects. Thank you. Happy holidays. And I'll give it to staff so they can keep it for their records. So, any other public comment at this time? We'll close public comment and we can dig right into item number five, which is the Zumbel Road Bridge Ballroom. Okay. And if you guys, um, I, I, I thought I had something on the agenda that was like talk about overages and budget, but um, I I must not. You can start wherever you want, man. That's fine. Okay. So um, so this is kind of a updated version of um. Sorry, I'm trying to get my. Are you guys seeing my screen? Yes. Okay. Cool. No. This is uh. What I have pulled up, hang on. You need to share the share the teams. There you go. Okay. All right. All right. So um so this is an up-to-date version of our tip data spreadsheet that we keep um to keep track of what's going on with everybody's projects. So you'll see down below that there's every Amanda, project. Yes. Uh, this it's a very it's you can't uh, read it. Yeah, it's I don't know if you can blow it up. Can you close up the transfer side? Let me try. Not any better, guys? No. No, they don't. Oh. <laughs> I know. Better. That's better? Yes. That's okay. better. Yes. I'll just kind of have to scroll to the side. That's okay. Okay. So you can see that we have every project that is ongoing. So anything that had funds in 2020 or has funds into 2025 is on this list. Um, the yellow is new projects. And then every, everything else is just updated with any anything that has been committed by the road board with the one exception of the Zumbel bridge culvert which does have an increased amount in here already um the i'll just note the kind of miscellaneous stuff below um these are all projects that are kind of handled in our office or projects we're kind of looking or we're looking at further out um so we have the pop Pothole program in there, which I think you guys have approved for next year, but not beyond that. Um, MoDOT cost share projects. This was the the design build contributions, and then we get credit back for seven and a half of that up above. And then this is the new cost share projects that are on the agenda tonight. Um, and then Route N is on here at four million for next year to continue to cover any new right-of-way acquisitions that might come about as well as the three million that MoDOT has asked for design. Um, 
you can see we have the 10 million economic that just rolls in and then the 5 million work reserve, which is both of those are non committed funds. They're just if we need those funds, they're there. So basically $15 million kind of there that is most unutilized at the moment. Um, so kind of going back to the top, you'll see that in 2022, we've proposed that we were going to end with 75 million, um, probably maybe be a little above that. So, and then next year we're projecting spending $125 million on project expenses. That will likely not happen. So I also prepared this quick little what we've projected versus what we've actually spent um, over the last like four years. So these are the numbers of, you know, what we actually budgeted for that we were going to spend the next year and what was actually spent. So we've never spent over $50 million in a year on projects. And I I will likely spend more this year because things are costing more. But um, I just wanted to kind of note that that number is traditionally much higher than and it ends up being because projects just don't do it go as quickly as we think they will. Um, and we're always preparing for the worst case. So all of that said, we end with what we have today. We end with 7 million at the end of next year. Um, I'm very comfortable with that. At the end of 2024, we have a $2 million balance, which is sort of what we generally aim for, but can be a little bit scary right now because you know we have all these looming knowing that projects are over budget or not over budget, but may come in with higher bids. Um, so yes, I think there was a little discussion before the meeting started and kind of the, oops, shoot, hang on. I wanted to. Amanda, those those figures, the seven and the two, have yep. that $15 million in yep. kind of economic development and five in just Correct. reserve. So we, we have, there is cushion in there. We've accounted for monies but they are unallocated. So if you exactly. threw that kind of money into that, we'd really have a much greater ending, ending balance. But again, those are programs, just not uh, specifically to a project. Right. That's, yeah. So, and I had a way, <laughs> I was all prepared to put in. So, I mean, basically, my I had little numbers here that I was trying to undo and get back, but I've changed my size, so it wants to undo that instead. But basically, yes. If uh, if we were to say that those funds, that 15 million is programmed, we would have very little that we could program in 23 for new projects starting in 24. We would be, you know, limited to this $2 million for 24 expenses, but we would be able to program, you know, a construction cost in um, 26. So if we had 15 million in construction that was coming in 26, we're okay out there. Um, so, and that's that's generally how we do, do think, you know, that's how the budget rolls. We try to budget tightly for the first two years and then we spend the mass amount of the funds available um, are for that construction year that we're, that we're working in. So next year, you know, unless we do have a ton of projects over budget, we should have money to program new projects. Um, we are bringing in almost $40 million a year. I'm told this 37.5 that they're telling us for 22 is low, um, and it will likely be more than that. They've projected 39 for next year, which I think is 5% over this, but they seem very comfortable with that number. And then we do 0.2% or not 0.2, 2% growth every year. Um, so we're showing in the 40. 40 million starting in 24. Um, so, you know, if we're bringing in that much and able to do 20 million in projects a year and then cover overages, um, the other kind of question mark is the pavement and how long that continues and if that's what the you know, cities want versus covering overages. If it comes to that, you know, that's something that could also be pulled or um, or changed, revised, reduced, whatever. Um, so we do have 
a very fair amount of flexibility here. I know that it's, you know, can kind of be nerve wracking and we're worried about just accepting every overages. But I also think that, like I think somebody said earlier too, the cities are paying 50% of the overages. So they're not going to just go move forward with the project that they don't need, um, you know, knowing that they're spending 50% of the overage as well. So I think that we continue to work with them. We have monthly meetings. We know where everybody is with um, all their projects. And these projects are on this list because they're important to the cities and they're important to um, us regionally. So I think we'd we're, we're just trying to move forward with things in this atmosphere and hopefully it does balance out in the in the near future but um i i don't think that just holding every project right now is is the right answer either so i think we've kind of taken some cautious steps on a few things that you guys aren't you know necessarily hearing about um that the cities are working through so we'll we'll just keep taking these requests and seeing what we can do is my advice on that. So Any I questions? I, I think I know, but what's your recommendation on Sunbell then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my recommendation would be to approve. We, Like I said, we put it in, um, in the budget for next year, which is not yet approved by council. So, um, but at this moment it's, it's in there and just kind of waiting on you guys to give blessing. Questions? I think this was brought up before by Dick. The useful life of the existing culvert. Do you know what that is? Brad. <laughs> Sorry, I had to unmute myself there. Yeah, so um <clears throat> As far as like useful life, it's it's probably difficult to say like the culvert can last another 10 years, another five years, however long it's going to last. What I will say is that the bridge um, that is there, the culvert, is functionally deficient for structural capacity. And what that means is that it's available for full replacement with federal funding, which is the funding that we receive from STP funds uh to to replace it so um you know as far as like if you look throughout the entire county we're not going to have a lot of structures that are worse than this right like st charles county does a very good job of of keeping all of our bridges and culverts in, in good shape and the fact that this one is a full replacement um funded project through east west gateway is is somewhat notable and especially since it's on such a, a high traffic corridor zumbell road that um you know it's it, it's just a matter of time so what, what's really happening is the bottom of the culvert is rusted out and over time that culvert will kind of turn in on itself and it'll it'll cause a you know a drop in the pavement and then you know we've got a problem keeping traffic on on zumbell road And that two million in federal funds is a you know significant amount that um, is probably one of the higher end amounts that projects tend to get from STP funds. So going back through that cycle again for likely that same amount um, would probably not be worth the effort, and again would set us back like four years. Brad, do you recall what the uh, what the traffic count is on that road? Is it, I'm guessing, 30, 35,000? Yeah, I think you're you're probably spot on there, Scott. I, I think you know that's the amount of traffic it carries a day. Wow. Um, it's it, it doesn't get easier with time to to fix it either. <laughs> we just continue to see growth here in St. Charles, so um, we 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 feel like. You know no matter what decision the road board makes we have to move forward on this project um, for the safety of the public and just um you know for the reputation of the city with uh, east west gateway and others um, we don't feel like it's in our best interest to turn back federal money uh, 
I'll make a recommendation to approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We'll send that on to the county council. Uh, let's go on to the I-70 outer road from uh, 94 to Zumba. I have. Amanda, did you make changes to these? No. Okay. Do you want to show those? Is that easier? Yeah, I got them. Right. I can stop sharing. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. Okay. Are you um? I'll share them. Are you with sure? the Are you sure? Oh, there we go. All right. Can the people on the virtually see it now too? I don't know. Okay. All right. So, as I think we discussed a couple months ago, I was sick. Um, <laughs> selected project uh, did not include exactly what we were looking for between 94 and Zumbel. So, we did um, look at doing a additional cost share project, which we submitted to MoDA and has been approved. Um, we are still waiting on the agreement, like I think I mentioned last time. However, mm -hmm. I did hear today that they will be crediting us for our one million that we put in for um, I-6470 mm -hmm. study. So our contribution to this will actually go down one million to um, what would that make it to five million six hundred and five thousand dollars. So um, again, I am recommending this. Uh, this will kind of complete the project more to what we were hoping to end up with. We will have connections at Hawk's Nest um, and a one way out of the road where there is none today with relocated ramps to uh, improve traffic flow to to Zumbo um, and from 94. Any questions? And is again, this those, is this one of those that you can't tell us what's going to happen or that can show us the design? Um, I can. Um, if I can find it. I can. I should have had that ready. Um, I guess I'd like to know what we're actually still kind of working on it. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I feel like I showed it a couple of months ago. So I can definitely show it. I just have to find it again. I wasn't prepared for this question for some reason. Here we go. Um, um, Sorry, I thought I knew where it was and it's not there. <laughs> Give me just a second. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> uh. Am I the only one that doesn't remember what, what, what she was describing? No, I don't remember. If I was going to be the only one, I was say to get it to this <laughs> I'm finding it. I'm almost there. I just had to dig through emails. Talking to. I don't, I don't necessarily. I mean, he's welcome to talk to us, but I mean, yeah. 
we, we pass it on to the county and that they've got the power and they're the ones actually approving it. We're recommending it and they right. take action. So. It's in our ordinance, our charter ordinance that yeah. allow it. Well, see, he claims it's not in the charter. It is, yeah. and I gave him a I copy think of it. It's not in the ballot and that's, that's what he's claiming. But it's in the full charter. That gives you guys the. No, he, he's claiming it's not in the, it was not in the ballot language that was submitted to the public. Program. Correct. All right. I found it. Okay. okay. You make it bigger. <laughs> yep. I'm working on it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Can you, is this? All right. Hang on. Maybe. There we go. Sorry, it's finicky because it's so big. And I even use the reduced version. Um, so this was the one we did talk about it two meetings ago because I talked about the through spooey and there was a big discussion yeah. about it. <laughs> so yeah. So basically uh there's off there's an off ramp beyond um 94 that's for Zumbel. And if you're going to Drasty, which we hope to build in the future, you would have to go through this buoy, a through movement in this buoy to get to it. Um, beyond that, we believe you would be able to get off at the interstate to access Hawk's Nest, which we are actually now going back to looking at just a little connector road here um, that would just be a locally owned road instead of a MoDOT road me needing to meet their um, grading, grade and whatever specifications they have. So um, that's still up for discussion. But in this, we showed this little connection down here. So that could move over here. Um, and then basically it's just one way and you would get on down here. This connection is also not not um, guaranteed or or sold and would be a local uh, improvement at, at some point. So it would build the, the roadway and the ramps um, and then we would likely come in and do the other projects. Doesn't MoDOT own that property west of that car lot already? Uh, I thought they did. Right here? No, uh, no, the next one down. That's the old farm credit. Oh, in between. this, this. That I believe one, they do. Yeah, I, I believe they do. they do. Yeah. They really just want to see more traffic modeling about kind of what that looks like and where this is before they would really say they approve it or not. Um, and we just weren't that far in the process. So we'll be working through all that. But basically the the 12 million designs and hopefully build, build this this two way out of road with ramps and modifies the signal. You said two way, you mean one way out of road, right? One way, sorry. Right, one way out of road, yeah. And the south side remains two way like it is today. Questions? Million dollar credit back, six million bucks in a million back, so it's five million, five point six, five point six. So, do we get the we get credit for the million up front or a million at the back end? Um, we'll get the credit up front, so we'll just pay the this will just be reduced to we owe 5.6 million and the district is putting in two, two million and the 60, two million sixty thousand. I know we talked about once before doing some of this work to keep Bass Pro shopped and 
St. Charles City, is this still anything to help them or is it, I don't know, you talk about are they going to move or I know supposedly you're going to close the Bellas eventually when they redo the sports complex. Well, they're already built a brand new Bass Pro Shop off of, uh, what was that, Lindbergh? Like it's, yeah, it's almost like 50% done right now. So when that's done, Eric Cabellas is done. Cabellas is done. What about St. Charles? What about Bass Pro? I don't know. Because it's probably one of the smallest ones they got left in the fleet. I know we do a bunch of we did a bunch of work over there uh, on fairgrounds, and that was to help keep Bass Pro there. So I'm just for, I just I mean for us this doesn't have anything to do with a business or anything like that. It's uh, more of the access to Hawks Nest and getting some of that traffic that's going north and south of the highway into kind of residential areas out of those very busy corridors of 94 and Zumbel. If you're able to get off, you know, beyond 94, access Hawk's Nest and go into, sorry, my, my, oh, I'm not even sharing it anymore. But anyway, oh, <laughs> and go into, that's okay. <laughs> but if, you know, if you visualize Hawk's Nest, and I don't have a good picture anyway, there's, neighborhoods to along that corridor and other things that you can access and this make lets you access those while avoiding Zumbel and, and 94 which are very busy and congested so that's kind of the reasoning behind um having this this link added and adding that connection to hawk's nest the so, the link itself was highway, not the okay. important piece which but is why we didn't okay, like their proposal <laughs> That makes sense. I can share a I can share a pic a map if that's helpful. Kelly, were you still hoping to um submit for federal dollars on this or not? I don't remember. Yeah, or we're still hoping to submit for federal. Yes, we are. So we'll probably, yeah, we'll be doing that in February. But basically, oh, still not sharing. I think you, you have to turn your share off. Nope, you, can you see me now? Yeah, it's going. Okay, all right, so yeah, so it's taking its sweet time, there we go. But all this, I don't know why it's buffering so poorly, but all these neighborhoods in here and down here, um, as well as, you know, the, the shopping center, if you're coming from the east and you want to get down here to these shopping centers, you could get off, swirl around and be right there without going over to Zumbel and, um, you know, into that mess of congestion. So that was, that's the main goal is just to provide another access point. Um, I can't remember how many miles it is between here, but these are fairly lengthy spaced interchanges because we were suburban when we put them in. And now that we're more urban, um, we could definitely use more access. That makes sense. Yeah, they're pretty much landlocked now, right? There's no big tracks of land left up that part of the studio. Uh, there's a little ground I think in front of the old office max and a couple spots through there but uh, so pretty much what they're doing at the Mr. Steak site that's been totally excavated right now. Yeah that's right at uh, the road <coughs> in Ox Nest. Right but that's not going to be residential. I mean my time to residential yeah, is right on residential wise it's pretty well yeah well filled in. Thank you. 
I don't know if we have talked about this. Even back when we were talking about putting car racks in there, remember? Is that not a fish tree, though? What do you No, car racks. Oh, no, car racks. Yeah. That's how it is on the other side. I mean, we talked about service roads and all that. I mean, there's a chance we can get money from the Fed on this. So if we go ahead and say, yeah. We're, I mean, we're still gonna, we're gonna move forward. <laughs> I guess I should say, like, I'm asking for your approval so I can tell the county council so that this was recommended. You should go ahead and say yes, okay? I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm just saying, <laughs> saying yeah, that I don't yet have a program agreement from MoDOT, but but I will yeah. soon, and it's going to go to council regardless of your recommendation. So um, basically, this it would be nice to be able to say, hey, we talked through the budget and, you know, whatever. But if you guys aren't comfortable with it, that's that's OK. It is, is the 5.6 built into your numbers for 23, yeah. 24, rather? Yeah. yeah. So, so if, it's, if they get federal dollars, that's Come down. Help us so we can yeah. make a motion to approve it. Yeah. So we go make a motion to approve. I'll second it. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any questions? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. And it looks like we'll get into some route N. All right, so this one, the other fun of uh, our existence with MoDOT. Um, still trying to move this project forward. MoDOT has not yet um, gotten it put in their stip, but maybe they're getting there. Um, I sent out, I guess I can also note, I sent out an email that was about the unfunded needs list, um, which I do encourage all of you to kind of take a look at. Um, I think there there is one phase of route in in that list. We would really love if they had both phases, phase one and two. Um, so, you know, if you have it in your heart to comment on that and uh, and push MoDOT towards that, that'd be great. Um, but anyway, they without having a project in their actual five year stip are not able to move forward. And because route in is just so critical to the county, we're really trying to keep it moving. Um, we have some big development coming in. We have a number of issues already without that. Um, so this is funds to move forward with design um, just to keep it keep it all going. It's three million dollars that they need um, for that. And what they said today is they will give us one and a half million dollars credit in a future cost share on each phase. So we would get our three million dollars back but we'd have to have um, cost share in both a phase one project and a phase two project. Phase one is from 364 to Hopewell and phase two is from Hopewell to Rapid City. So um, it is highly likely that we would participate in those projects just because they're on lettered route. You know, it's a lettered route, not an interstate. And um, we see them as, as very important projects for our municipalities. We'd probably have some involvement from O'Fallon, Winsville, Lake St. Louis on those as well. So um, we're we're okay with that that request with the future credit. And um, I would ask that you guys go ahead and recommend this three million that is again in the in that budget that you just saw. So you're jump starting to kind of grease the skids, and then it's more likely to get into the yep. spot your plan as we move forward. Correct. I'll make a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Mm -hmm. Sir, mm -hmm. Hearing mm -hmm. none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. And this is the route that they kept having the meetings about and everything MoDOT did and what yeah. happened. Why didn't it? So it was, it was. Um, proposed to be an environmental 
um, assessment, which they ended up not going through with because we couldn't fund the whole project. Um, they they basically at, at Federal Highway said you needed to have funds to commit for the whole project in order to approve an EA. And the whole project is like $150 million and MoDOT wasn't going to commit anything. So um, they moved it from that EA to a planning and environmental linkages study, which has allowed us to move forward with design. And then we will just do um, the environmental studies during the design process like normal. Um, it was really a better deal. I'm not sure why. Well, I guess they didn't think of it, say it initially because it would have actually been way easier to go that route and just kind of figure out a corridor. Um, but in the end, it's it's much easier moving forward. We just kind of spent a lot of time and effort doing a process that wasn't really necessary. Because they were going to change I the guess. corridor, but they were going to change it to where it was done. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they looked at some other alternatives, alignments that even were away from, um, you know, the main part of Route N before Route Z and stuck right. with Route N and then that Buckner Road piece for the the western end. Yep. Okay. Any other questions on that one? Okay. So I have nine. We've got the approval of the Road Board 2023 project application guidelines. So for these, we added a few things that we haven't had in there before. Um, Kelly, if you want to scroll down, um, I think really to page three and four. We modified last year reconstruction. Um, well, actually, no, I lied. We modified reconstruction this year to um, kind of note that we are doing a maintenance maintenance fund, but to state that you know they need to make sure that they're taking care of their roadways and not letting them to deteriorate deteriorate so that they can um, ask to reconstruct them later and we're keeping track of all that pavement uh pavement status like pavement scores all whatever that's called <laughs> sorry um, you know what you're talking about? pavement rating that's what i'm okay. getting at i mean do we have a minimum do we have a minimum or a maximum on the rating in there so before we consider we um i don't know if we set a actual minimum for reconstruction um in the contract for the pavement rehab they have to be below a certain threshold to um be able to use that money and we have goals which um we actually prepare a tip book and it's I was hoping it'd be done done tonight so I could give you each one, but it's not quite done. Um, I will email it out as soon as it is done later this week. But that has kind of a summary of all the goals and what we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to improve roadways throughout the county. So um, I guess the difference in the reconstruction is they're not it's not local residential roadways as much um, as what I think the, the rehab funds will be used for. But we just worded that a little different to make sure that was pulled in there. Um, and then we kind of, I think utilities was already in there. This was something that was already there. And then if you go to page four, we added a little blurb about ITS, making sure that the new projects stay on the GGL system, um, the bike ped, they coordinate with the plan and safety again coordinates with the county strategic highway safety plan and that um, projects include the the improvements that we're calling out there. So basically just trying to coordinate with the plans that we're preparing and um, work with the cities to make sure they're following along with all that. And it will also go into the scoring. It's just a guideline here, but we're working on trying to make sure all that is uh, reflected in the scoring for next year's projects. Hey Amanda, in the, yep. the initiative that's come out about zero fatalities by 2050, mm -hmm. how does this track, I mean, as you're going along uh, producing these documents and so forth, is that tracking along with the goals of that uh, initiative? 
In other words, you know, someday in the year 2040, the county's not going to have to come back and change a whole bunch of stuff because it's not part of their criteria. So as you're laying out ideas and guidelines, are they going to be promoting the uh, spirit of that initiative or running First. contrary to it? Yeah, no, no, definitely for sure promoting. Um, that's kind of the whole, the whole goal that the federal highway has set forth is is the vision zero. And I think everything we do in terms of safety is, you know, obviously to prevent fatalities and also to prevent all crashes. Um, the on local roadways, it's a little bit there aren't a ton of fatalities. So obviously, we're going to focus on areas where there are. Um, because there are are not as many, but it's, it's harder to make improvements that prevent a fatality, especially if that person was, you know, unbelted or driving drunk or um, playing with their phone. So there's a lot of, I think, public relations kind of stuff that goes into this, which we're also going to do. But yeah, from a, you know, road construction perspective, we're definitely making sure that we're building the roadways to do what we can to prevent fatalities along any any reconstructed project or anything we're doing. On your bike and pedestrian improvements, the way it's written there, it looks like you can do sidewalks and bike paths without doing a road as a, as a separate project, or is it only included for, along with road improvements? It is still, I, I'm not sure if it's specifically worded, but it's still it says, um, it says meant, it may, may be included, so may be included means it doesn't have to be included. Yeah, I think we would definitely be encouraging inclusion if it's on a roadway that's in the um, in the plan. Um, as far as projects that are like just bike and ped, again, we have not done those in the past. I think the only um, the only exception is Pittman Hill. So if something like that came up again, where it was the project we did previously, and they now it's in the plan and they want to come back and make the connection, um, I'm thinking we would maybe let you guys consider that. Um, again, everything is just an application that we look through and score. So these these are just guidelines and we make the final decisions. I thought it was worded in the actual legislation that the road has to be connected, the sidewalk or the bike path. Like if we're opening the door for this off-road stuff, it's like that's. Oh just... yeah, no, 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 no. We're not going to do like GRG trails that aren't. Yeah, no, no, that's not what I meant. Yeah, if there's a a shared use path or something along a roadway that wasn't built at that time because it wasn't part of a plan or whatever we could maybe go back to that along the roadway. But no, we're not doing any off off system trails. Are we okay with the guidelines? Would that entertain a motion? Yes. Motion to approve. Session. Any questions or any other on the, oh, on the guidelines? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. That passes. Any other business, Amanda? Uh, nope. Nothing from me. Looks like we've got a question. I got a question. Yeah, I guess you guys first. Uh, Amanda, can you just um, maybe try to answer a question I have? Right now on these overages, we're running a situation where we've got these cost estimates and the bids are coming in dramatically higher. Is there an estimate of the number of projects that are currently fit in within those two guidelines that we've got the cost estimates but haven't been bidded yet that could potentially come in as overages in the future? Is that too big of a <laughs> I don't know. Um, I I I've stopped doing that because um, it's just fluctuated so much that it's kind of not even not become not worth the effort. I guess is a way to put it. Um, 
we we can look at that again. We are trying to get estimates from the cities as they move through the different phases of design on all the projects that are out there. So um, in the new year, as we get those in, we could add another column to the spreadsheet that kind of says current estimate. I think actually Sarah's already done in a different spreadsheet um, that has just the current estimate um, and that'll kind of give us an idea. So yes and no. It would appear that our current policy is, is we're going to try to fund these overages as long as we have the funds available. Yep. At some point in time, we won't have funds available, correct? If, if we continue on the current path. Well, yeah, I mean, unless we just, if we push projects out or the cities push projects out, we could be able to keep doing that and fund all the projects with overages that are currently on the books by not funding um, new projects. We'll just have to decide, well, us and the cities, we'll have to decide how to work through that. Which that'll create another set of problems, honestly, because you won't have right. projects coming online. I mean, right. you just, you know, you'd have a couple of years potentially with little or no new programming. Right. And I guess there's no projects that we have somewhere within those boundaries that we want to prioritize to keep funds for for when it does come in with an overage. Is that a correct statement? I have not done that um, yet. I think we could, you know, ask the cities what their highest priorities would be and try to do something like that. Um, and I'm, I'm like I've said, the cities are contributing too, so I'm sure they're going to come to a point where they're doing the same thing. So it's probably not a big ask to, you know, sit down and say which which project is most important to you if we have to hold something off or or drop something. I think it's going to again tie back to federal funds. If right. You, you took the funds or programmed them. You're going to decide do we do we risk giving them back and trying to reapply or do any, the reputational risk of doing that or you figure out these are the ones we have to, not have to do but more than likely we'll do because we don't look, lose those dollars so basically you're going to do only things you got federal funds so well uh, and i think even when we approve things that raises the skids again to, to get those done because again we've got somebody sharing those costs and we're spending a lot less if there's federal funds at it than we are for doing an 80 20 match with the Municipality or even a 50-50 match with the municipality. Yeah, see almost yeah. all the new roads don't have federal funds or new roads. Yeah. So, so I guess, and Amanda, I mean, when you look at this spreadsheet wow. you just gave out, basically you're going to ask the cities to submit projects for the 24 through 26 period, but we will not be able to approve any projects for 24 unless this spreadsheet changes. Right. We no, we can because we First. have and currently we have fifteen million dollars that's not programmed between economic development right. and reserve. Right. Economic development and the five thousand. Yeah. Or five million in the other one. And well, traditionally, the, the first year of okay, call it two. I agree with you. Yes, one. And the first year of funding is usually designed so that that cost is generally lower. Say it again. Design would be your design. Oh, yes. Okay. You'll push construction out as far as you can, probably. Yeah. How often are you revising the top part of this question? What was the question? How often do you revise the top part that shows how much money of the need? TIF on the funding and then that that all came from the budget. Yeah, I know, but yeah, the, the sales tax and such. Well, that is not only that, but what's been spent, what's spent, because we always said, you know, you program it, but you don't really spend it as fast as you program it. Yeah, we have another column that's not in there. That's current cost to date, and we constantly update payments that have made reimbursements that have been received. Um, so that's that's updated anytime we get anything in or out. 
I didn't want to confuse you guys with more stuff, but it's all in, it's all in there. That's <laughs> a live working spreadsheet. Yes, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Bob, do you have another question? Or? Well, until she, I mean, right now, you only got $10,000. Like, must we use that 15 thing for next year? Our steel pothole program or whatever. But if you look at the proposed in this column, mm -hmm. so if, well, there's another column next to it for 2022. Right. So if, say, right, I didn't write that column, but um, so when, if you're proposing that you're going to spend 50000 for the Say county is Augusta Bottom Bridge, right? But they only spend 30. That's my point. Is that then this will at the uh at the, in January, I will update okay. all of these so whatever is not spent, then that'll be rolled over 2023. Correct, it'll show a, a better but balance in 20. That rolls then that is like a snowball, it rolls over. And that's what's programmed, but probably will not be, well, not probably, will not be spent. Right. Right. Can we get the next one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're constantly estimating, and um, I think Sarah put a comment here somewhere that now I can't find that said, um, you know, that each, the cities are, good, goodness gracious, where is it? The cities are, um, are mostly of the projects are not really that far along and so you know we have we have a lot of time to work with the estimates and that preliminary design so we'll uh we have just maybe one project per city that is kind of at risk of a, a big overage that's not really accounted for yet i do like the idea that they've got to come with 50 percent they got to be willing to step up and share the pain also, which is minimum 50%. You've got to be putting them on a tailspin, too. And then so that'll make them prioritize. Yeah, basically. Yep. Well, it takes money away from the other municipalities. Could it's you put that in off. for the 23 that any overages, the minimum of city will contribute is 50%? Just to, to the overages. That way, I mean, because I think there was some talk about some 80 20 splits and. Don't have a guideline. Yeah, you're right. At one point, I was trying to follow the uh, the same distribution that they had. Um, yeah, I think we've kind of established that it's I I think we'll probably stick with that. It's not necessarily in the guidelines because it's not an application per se, but I would say that moving forward, um, you got to yeah. have a. A pretty we have to ask, and we have to. It's a negotiated. It's a negotiated point on the overages. Am I right? No, I think. Yeah. I think technically by contract, the overages are 100 percent on them. If, yes. If we wanted to play, I mean, yes, that's not right. correct. But I mean, to contract in the day when there would be slight overages, it was always on. That was their risk. Right. But these are. Yep. I so we're, we're, we're and about, I think we're basically. technically paid. per contract. Right. Per contract, if the project is not completed in a certain time frame, the cities are supposed to pay back the funds. So that that puts a lot of um, a lot of onus on them to get the work done um, and and to work with us on those averages. Now, obviously, we're probably going to be a little more flexible on on time frames and for working through all that. But I think the fifty fifty is is pretty much what we'll stick with. So it looks like we've got a, a tentative meeting, but we're back on our third Wednesday. So a tentative meeting in January. I guess you'll just let us know on that, but then we definitely have a meeting on uh, Wednesday, February 15th. Okay. When would we elect, when would we elect you for <laughs> <laughs> motion to adjourn? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Again. A lot of meetings this year. Thank you, everybody. We had full attendance tonight, so 
sure. Uh, very much appreciated, and thanks for all you do. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And sorry I couldn't be there, but I didn't want to expose you guys to anything just in case. So, <laughs> see you all soon. Happy, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Are they really seeing costs?